Hello, and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. And boy, oh boy, have I missed you people for the last couple of weeks. I have had a lot of technical issues going on. So therefore, the delay in this type of a recording. But I do hope you have seen several of the recent podcast interviews I appeared on. And in each of the shows, I do have a presentation of either um, a mobility class in a chair or chair yoga or strength training. It's all there for you. But I'm very happy to be back with you. And uh, there's more challenges happening in this area. But I have uh, some ideas in mind to see how we can work through them. And what we're going to be doing today for you is a standing lower body workout supersetting. So what supersetting is basically doing two different exercises back to back. And the accessories we'll be using today, well, we'll be using a chair, we'll be using a couple of booty bands, a thick ball or Pilates nine inch ball, a sticky yoga mat, a wedge, well, actually two wedges I'll be using, but I'll be using one at one time and then both at another. And also uh, for the weights, I will be using both 20 and 25 pound weights today. Now, this moves me into our precautionary measures, our medical disclaimers. So the fit ball or the Pilates ball um, or the yoga mat, they can be made out of latex. So if you do have a latex allergy, you want to look for latex free or non-latex. Also, um, those of you who have been um, diagnosed with any back spine issue whatsoever. In particular, if you've been told not to forward flex the spine, not to bend down and pick up something, particularly something of weight, um, or if you have any postural deviations, especially hyperkyphosis, which is kind of like that hunched appearance. Now, both of these are typically associated with, but not exclusive to, osteoporosis. So do please pay attention to it. Um, also, if you're medicated or not for hypertension, if you have vertigo, GERD, if you have any feet issues like arthritic feet or bunions or hammer toes, plantar fasciitis, and um, if you have any vestibular issues, this would be issues with your balance, then I would invite all of you to please not immediately participate in the workout, but to preview the video first and certainly look for what you can do. We get very good over the decades of dealing with chronic issues, chronic pain, um, and we get really, really good at saying no. No, no, no. And that is also very smart and we're protecting ourselves, but at some point it doesn't serve when it's 100% of the time. So I'm just asking you to preview the video and broaden your horizon and maybe you can see that there will be, I promise you, there will be one exercise that you will be able to do. But if you're not sure, then I would invite the medical health care practitioner who knows your body best to preview the video as well and help you make an informed decision. So just some gentle reminders to please stay hydrated with water throughout the workout, uh, unless you have some kind of a kidney uh issue, bladder issue, uh, please make sure you stay hydrated. And uh, feel free to stop and rest whenever you need to, but please do not quit. Do not quit. I ask you just to take that proper few moments rest and then give it one more try. And this is how you'll get stronger. Um, on the channel, I will be providing a rating of perceived exertion chart. These are fantastic for people on certain medications like beta blockers, for people who have had certain procedures. So um, that can only kind of predetermine the heart rate like a pacemaker. So, um, and for people who don't know how to take their heart rate, it's really a great chart. And I would suggest that you work at an RPE between three and six on this chart. Also to remind you, we have a warm up and a cool down video. It's one video. They're both in there and they're interchangeable on the channel. Please use that. And it is advised for those of us who are 55, five, five years and above to warm up for a full 10 minutes prior to any workout. So how are we handling today is this. Um, we're going to be doing 
one set of every exercise in a vertical fashion, meaning just one after the other, but without any of the equipment, the accessories. This is for those of you brand new to exercise, brand new to strength training. Those of you who have these pre-existing chronic issues I mentioned, and probably there are those out there with many others, right? So I just think it's best um, that you work with it if you decide that it is appropriate without the equipment first. And you can always gradually go into the equipment. Um, and then what we, we will be doing is the entire program, but we'll be doing two rounds of four blocks of exercises. We have eight exercises and we'll do those then as super setting. So it's, uh, we're gonna keep that metabolism up and we're going to help you build some muscle strength and bone, uh, good bone health here. Um, and what else do we have? I think that is it. So we're gonna begin here with the first block is going to be elevated heel squats. That's why you see my wedge down on the floor, along with bent over unilateral hip extension. Now, right up front, those words, bent over. That means those of you with back spine issues, postural deviations, I want you to assume it is uh, contraindicated for you, unless you've been told otherwise, okay? So therefore, what we're going to do for you is just keep everything upright and doable for the first round, because all of us are going to benefit from all of this as a warm-up. Um, now, with the elevated heel squats, let me show you something. So this is what I use, a wedge. Now, I don't expect that you're going to have a wedge right away, right? So here's a little way to hack that. What you can do is grab, if you have them, a couple of dumbbells like this. You put them on the floor right up against each other, and you place your heels on the bars, the handles that you see here. So it's a great way to hack it. Now, is it perfect no because the feet are not fully in plantar flexion so it's going to look like this right this is full plantar flexion because the toes are not bent but if you need to stand on the weights that's perfectly okay so let's get started here for the first exercise the elevated heel squats now I'm going to sit back into a chair, but for those of you with the back spine issues, if you need to, you can do something up against the wall so that you have the back supported by the wall for a wall seat. So I'm going to sit back, toes lifted inside the shoes, inhale, I bring the arms forward, exhale, I come up, take a slight posterior pelvic tuck. I'm squeezing the gluteals. Inhale, sit back. Exhale up. So what I love about working on the wedge is if you have knee issues, it really targets those quadriceps. It gets the glutes. I'm just feeling each time to make sure I'm giving a squeeze. Might look peculiar, but that's the way it goes. I'm just going to take a couple more here. You want to exhale on the effort. One more. The effort here is on the way up. Breath in and out through the nose, okay? Now, coming over to the chair. I know I said unilateral bent over before, but we're staying upright for those of you with the issues out of respect for that. So, standing tall, and I'm going to go straight back with my foot. Now, let me just see something. If I go a little further back, Yes, that's what I want you to see, my feet. That's important. So standing tall, back, exhale, pressing back, hip extension, working the gluteals, working the hamstrings, working the erector muscles of the back. They're all involved. So if you did a big kickback, that would be inappropriate. One more, and then we'll do it on the other side. Belly button in, tall, and back. Okay. 
Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Here, the exhale is when you go back. Try not to drop your body weight into the chair. Two more. Belly button in and release. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next block. The next block will be elevated heel fit ball squats. So we're going to tie in the fit ball on the next one, but not the weights. And we're also going to be doing unilateral hip abduction. Uh, we will tie in the booty band with that and the fit ball, but not on the demonstration here. So for this next one, I'm going to grab my second wedge. And I think I'm going to show you with the fit ball as well, just not the weights. So when I come up onto the wedges, I back up on them. So now I'm going to bring the ball between my thighs. Now notice the plug. I don't let it touch the skin. If the ball is between the inner thighs and just a little bit to the inner knees. Now, instead of sitting back into a chair, what I want to do is almost lean back a little bit and I'm sliding down that white backdrop behind me. The knees are pointing down, not out in front. And up, squeeze, squeeze the inner thighs, squeeze the ball, squeeze the glutes. Inhale. Now, when I actually do it with the weights, I will be holding a suitcase style with the weights. If you have lighter weights and you want to, you can always bring them up at the shoulders. It's up to you. So now we're tying in the hip adductor muscles, inner thighs. So what do we have going on here? We have the quadriceps, the glutes, the back the inner thighs, we have the plantar flexor muscles of the leg. That would be the gastrocnemius, the soleus, and the plantaris. You want to talk about compound movements, folks, right? And this is very much an exercise that will help you with the muscles of the core for your balance. One more. And now I'm going to take the ball with me. Um, am I going to show you with the ball? No, I don't think so. I think for the moment, I'm going to demonstrate this without the ball for those of you who don't, might not have it. So here we go. Let me bring this a little forward. How I want you to stand here is bend the outside leg. So for you're seeing this as your, my left leg, right? I'm going to laterally rotate it, externally rotate it. Notice the back heel is going in the direction of the right glute. And then I come out and in. Now, do not let the left thigh come forward of the right. So hip abduction is going away from the midline of the body. Pulling the belly button in. And I'm pausing at the peak of the contraction. Give it a little bit of a delay. Otherwise, when you don't have additional resistance, you can kind of fly through stuff and it gets sloppy. You don't want that to happen. Let's go for one more. And then take it in. I'm going to bring the chair over to the other side. And here we go outside. This would be the right thigh as you see it. There's that external lateral rotation and take it out. Now, what I want you to be careful of here is not like overly leaning into the chair. Higher is not better. Some people try to really bring it way up there. It's like turning into like a, an oblique exercise. That's not what it is. I'm not saying that they're not involved. I'm just saying that's not what I'm shooting for though, for the intention of the exercise. And exhale, right. Good. A few more. You could also stand on a yoga block to get to challenge your balance a little bit more. And one more. Good. And we'll take it down. Now I'm going to set this off to the side. Let me see. Am I going to use it for the next? Yes, I will. Now I'm going to put these away for the moment. And let's do some. Romanian deadlifts. I did not name it that, okay? So a deadlift, I'm going to show you the difference between a deadlift and a squat. So here's 
a squat. I'm standing in an athletic ready stance. I'm going to face you here. So athletic ready stance means I place the hands on the high pelvic bone, line up the ankles to knees to the inside of the pelvic bone. Don't let the fingers come in this way. Straight down. Now, this is a basic squat. I'm lifting the toes inside the shoes. So I sit back into the chair. Now, here's a basic deadlift. You're hinging from the hip. Now, those of you with back spine issues, postural deviations that you're not permitted to do the forward flexion, then I would stay upright and do the squat, all right? So what we're going to do is bring the feet now wider than the hips for Romanian deadlift. And here's my hip hinge. The hands are directly in front of the legs and thighs. There's that slight posterior pelvic tilt, a pelvic tuck, and engaging of the gluteal, squeezing. And what if you don't have any of those issues, but you're just kind of tight at the hamstrings and you don't have much range of motion? Bend and hinge. When I say bend, make sure the knees are bending and that you're hinging. And that's fine. That's still going to be a deadlift. Basically respecting where you are at the present moment and understanding that's the best that you can do until it changes and you can make that change. A couple more. Exhaling on the effort. Keep the head up. For those of you medicated or not for hypertension, you have GERD or vertigo. Last one here. Great. Okay, so now I'm going to take this into heel raises. I will be using weights, but I'm going to show you with the chair for those of you who need to hold on to something. Now, I just want you to see the feet. Okay. You're going to se separate the feet, hips width apart, and I want to focus on the gastrocnemius. That is kind of that bulbous uh, the, the, yes, the kind of the bulbous shaped muscle uh, in your calf. So in order to engage that the most, we bend the knees because the gastrocnemius is involved in flexion of the knee. So we come up onto the balls of the feet, my toes just crack. And if you prefer for whatever reason that you wanna go after soleus, then you can straighten the legs Couple more, one more, great. Now I'm going to move this out of the way. I'll bring it back. And the final block will be a lateral static lunges along with split static lunges. So I'm gonna start over here to the side. Now you can, you can incorporate arm movement like so. Now notice I moved further out. So you wanna be aware of your circumstance, don't hit anything. So you can tie in some delt abduction going away from the midline, delt adduction going toward the midline. You can tie this in during this exercise. So here we go, we come out and back to center. Now you can also not touch down and you can, but I find that for what we need is we need to touch down. We need to be able to have that resistance instead of momentum. So this is tying in both the hip abductors and the hip adductors. You want to land the body weight into that back hip here. So then to the right hip and then close from there. I'm gonna go for one more. Hold there. Other side. So I wanna be careful, I don't hit anything over here, right? I want you to see the feet. Okay, here we go. So you can choose to use a weight or not. But on the warm up, I'm always going to say lay off the weight for a little bit. Just let your body get used to the movement, particularly if it's new to you.
Two more. Exhale right here, close. Great. Now the next round will be, or I should say the next exercise is that split static lunge. So we're gonna go this way, also known as split squat. Let's see if I can get, okay. I'm gonna put the hands to the waist. Um, when I go to do it, I'll hang my weight suitcase. You can come up here at the shoulder as well. So down and up. Now, try not to get caught up in forward and back. Now there is a way to do it, which is appropriate to lean a little bit, that's fine. But you don't wanna be lunging forward and back. And you don't have to touch the floor. When I put the weights in my hands, I will not be touching the floor. I'm just working on range of motion right now. I'm gonna go for two more. And I'm gonna close. Okay, now let's take it to the other side. There we go, I'm gonna shimmy back. Belly button is in, chest up and down and up. The breath is inhale to lower, exhale to lift. If you can breathe in and out through the nose, please do. But of course, if you have COPD, then you wanna look into um, pursed lip breathing. American Lung Association has some really great videos on their website for that. Just a couple more. And close from here. So there you go. We've done the whole routine. Those of you who want to continue on without weights, you're invited to do so. But now I'm setting up with the weights, okay? So give me a few moments. So first off, I'm gonna put my chair out. However, this time out, the chair is gonna turn this way. And let's grab a wedge. And then for this exercise, the elevated heel squats, I will be using 25 pound weights. Get that out of the way. Climbing up the wedge, roll the shoulders back. Don't let the weight swing in front of you, all right? So now we sit back into the chair and exhale up, pelvic tuck squeeze. So now we're on the supersetting part. Yep, when I work, I get quiet. Yeah. One more. Carefully coming off that wedge if you're using one. Now, I'm gonna grab my fit ball and for the bent over unilateral hip extension, okay? So let's want you to see the feet. Right, so I'm gonna move this block back, I mean the wedge back a little bit. Ball, again, the plug not behind the skin here, bringing it behind the left knee, it's bent. Now, those of you with carpal tunnel syndrome, let me show you something. If you do it, I just did with the hands on the bench, this is contraindicated for you because it's wrist extension. However, I am going to do the first round with forearms down so you folks can do it as well. So here we go. I want you to think about planting the sole of the foot on the ceiling. Pause at the peak of the contraction. Or stand upright, right? Holding onto the chair like we did in the warm up. Oh gosh, I'm going for one more. Yes, me and my glutes. Ugh. Always challenging. Okay, other side. Pull that belly button in. 
Try not to arch the lower back. You don't want to overly tuck under either. Pause at the peak of the contraction. That's on the lift. And exhale as you lift. One more. And slowly down. Oh boy, I felt that. Okay, now back to, here's the superset. I'm grabbing the 25s. Up onto the wedge. I'm sweating already. <laughs> it's Miami Beach. We sweat. Okay, you know what? I got to pull that a little forward. It's a little too far back. I feel like I'm going to be in the curtain behind me. Okay. Yeah, here we go. And now lift the toes inside the shoes to really guarantee you're going to drive up from the heels. When you do this, you get more gluteal. But in this case, I feel a lot also in the quad. Lots of work in the quad and the glute. Oh man, is that talking. One more. Carefully coming off. Woo. Back to the chair. This time I'll place the palms flat just as a variation for you. Again, the hand position here is contraindicated for carpal tunnel syndrome. Last one. Oh, oh yeah, that just talked to me. Okay, behind the opposite. I want to make sure the standing leg is straight. Yep. Pause at the peak of the contraction. So it is South Beach on a Saturday. Anything can happen with noise in the background. It just goes with the territory. I can't let that stop me. One more, and whew, let me place the ball down for the moment. Okay, so now we're on to the next block. We have the elevated heel fit ball squats along with the unilateral um, hip abduction. So let me get that set, and let me grab my second wedge, and I'm going to bring the Fit ball over. This time in between the thighs. Again, plug is away from the skin. Now we're going to come up onto the wedges. Remember, we're not sitting back on this round. We're leaning. Try not to let those weights Shift forward. So much going on here right now, it's fantastic. Are you staying hydrated? It's important. Particularly if you're on medications. Well, certain medications. I'm going to go for one more. Whew. Carefully coming off.
Now, I want to tie in a booty band here. So I'm going to turn the chair around. I'm going to grab a blue one. So this is a master of muscle booty bands, and they are in my Amazon store. You'll see the link in the show notes. Okay, I'm bringing this up. I turned the chair around because for some of you, I'm a little concerned about you standing, putting the band on. So just sit down when you go to do it. <clears throat> Grabbing my ball. I'm gonna push those over a little bit. I'm gonna bring the ball behind the knee. Remember external or lateral rotation from the hip out and in, out. I wanted to make sure that knee was not going forward of the standing knee. Are getting those hips for sure. Oh. One more. Ooh, man, that was talking to me. Okay. That ball squeezed in, tucked in behind the knee. Testing balance. One more. Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you don't hold on, it's definitely more challenging. Okay. Back to the elevated heel fit ball squats. Let's turn this so it's ready for the other. Here we go. Ball. No plug, right? Plug behind me. <clears throat> Sliding down. Squeeze. Chest up, no collapsing. Don't allow the abdominal muscle to pull you down. Mm. Ooh la la, couple more. That's it. <laughs> Slowly up. I'm taking the ball. Putting the band back on. And you might hear some sirens going off. <laughs> it's possible. Okay, we'll turn this. <clears throat> and ball behind. External lateral rotation, here we go. Getting into that gluteal, or the gluteals, I should say. Exhale, inhale. This side was an injured side, so it's always a little bit more challenging for me. Last one. Oof, 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 oof. It's like it bites right in there when I've had it. It's just, that's it. Okay. Yeah, there's a big difference for me.
And you can stand on a yoga block, right? You can have it underneath that standing leg. It'll challenge your balance even more. Mm. That's it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, whatever you say. So now, uh, we did the two sets, I believe. And I'm not going to use the chair any further, so I'm going to put this away. That would be T for terrific, his name. And I'm going to also put away the wedges. Okay, so for the next block, we're going to do Romanian dead licks with a booty band and heel raises. Now, I'm tying in weight, so that's why I put the chair away. But if you need the chair, that's okay. So the, yes, I'm gonna put a booty band on. I was gonna wear my weightlifting gloves, but I have to tell you, it's hot. <laughs> it's just hot. It's Miami Beach, can't help it. So I just said, nope. <laughs> okay, that'll do. All right, so for this one, I'm using 20 pounds. And I'm gonna face you now. I'm gonna come a little bit closer in. Okay, here we go. Remember, hinge. I, I have a winged scapula on my left shoulder. You, you see it as left, this is really my right. So I gotta kind of put it back into place. Here we go. Knees are bending, head is up. Always caution with medicated or not for hypertension. Third and vertigo. Mm. So when anything challenges your balance, if you have vestibular issues, you want to make sure you have an aid with you, some companion with you, so you're not working out alone. Exhale. Mm. One more. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Whatever. So let me set these down for the moment, but I am going to grab a 20 pounder for the next one. Just take these off, this off. I don't know if you could see me dripping down here with sweat, but I am. Okay. Now, for the heel raises, gastrocnemius focus. Okay. Lots of work in the quad also. These are bent. Lifting those heels. Could be challenging for feet issues, right? You can also do it seated. You can do it seated with a weight across your thighs. One more. Okay, I'm gonna put the booty band back on. <clears throat> and here we go. All right, let's grab the 20s, oral. Romanian dead lift. I think I'll do it from the side here for you. Just a little different view. Okay. Make sure you have that hip hinge. Pull the tail out. Keep the head up. We always want, at least I do, want the lumbar spine and the cervical spine, which are both in a natural lordotic curve to match each other in this type of work. Otherwise they're working against each other and that lends themselves to a little back bend, a little back extension. Oh gosh, one more. Oh. 
the butt. Off this comes. Can't say I'm not sorry to see it go, but I am grateful to it. <laughs> Again, remember, it's up to you. If you want to focus on soleus, you keep the heels straight. So you can do this, or I'm going to a little bit, I think a little wider for this. Heel raises, knees bent, gastrocnemius. Lots of quad here now. Gets to the point, it's like, wow, I really feel the quad too. Because the knee is bent. So both quads and gastrocnemius work to flex that knee. Actually, to, no, I'm sorry, the quad will extend the knee. Pardon me. That would be the hamstring, but the quads are just talking. <laughs> Off. One more. Off. Okay. <clears throat> they were talking so much, I didn't know what I was talking about, flexion or extension. Okay, so now we're going to do the lateral static lunges. I'm going to have a 25 pounder for that. And then our split static lunges will be 20 pounds for me. Okay, here we go. Holding it in front of me. Step it out. Get the weight back into that right glute and close. Sweat just landed in my eye. <laughs> it's, it's a glamorous gig, folks. I love it. This is my third time doing this routine today. Okay, let's head over here. <clears throat> Not too much. I want you to see the feet and I want to be in the light. Okay, here we go. I know I'm asking for a lot. Got to get all the way upright. Right. <clears throat> Two more. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry for the sounds. And now the split static lunge, split squat, whatever you want to call it. I'll call it whatever you want to. Okay. I won't be touching the floor here, folks. That doesn't mean you don't have to touch the floor. If you readily can do it, you do it. But if you can't, that's okay too. One more. Okay, so remember, we're not going forward and back. We're going up and down. If you wanna lean a little bit, that's okay. Yeah, here we go. So let me see to lean a little, it can be done like this, a little bit of a lean, if you want, or upright, I don't care, whatever you wanna do. Vestibular issues, you can do this between two chairs, holding on to something, make sure somebody's with you. Two more. Mm. And I'm going to set the weights down. And if you're continuing to do this unweighted, good for you. Okay, let's grab the weight. 
Whew, okay. Lateral squats or lateral lunges, the static position. Oh gosh, Woo. one more, I'm gonna go for it, that's it. That's my breath and Two more. Oh, gosh. Whew, okay. And these static split squats, lunges, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Down. And I'm going to pitch a little forward. Pull the belly button in. Got to support the abdominals, got to support the back. Mm. Two more. Mm. Last one. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. Yo, last one. Okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure you can see my feet. Tell I'm getting tired. My arms want to swing forward. Oh. Couple more. Last one. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Okay, folks. So that's what we have for you today on Boomer and Beyond Wellness. Now I'm going to direct you back to that warm up, cool down video. Please go stretch. It's very important for you right now to stretch. Take several minutes to do so. And um, also, folks, if you find the content here to be of value to you, I would really appreciate it. If you could subscribe, it really does help. And um, maybe consider sharing it with loved ones, particularly those who might be a little bit frightened about working out. Um, also hit the notification bell, right? To stay current content. Maybe put a kind comment as well. Now, if you are interested in my services uh, virtually for private work in senior fitness, this would be for personal training and also for Hatha yoga, now, not for senior fin fitness, but I also do virtual prenatal yoga, opposite end of the spectrum. And on site in Miami Beach, uh, I do give uh, massages. I am an LMT. And um, what I really love to do is deep tissue massage, Swedish massage. And I'm also a specialized in geriatric massage. And I'm also brought in for palliative care purposes as well. So, folks, until next time, stay hydrated. You know that I live a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. So eat your greens, eat your beans, and thank you so much for your support. Be well.